Okay, I am um, re-recording this. So <laughs> welcome to unit one, lesson three. This lesson is going to focus on the importance of slope and what we do with it in math, uh, particularly when we're describing lines, but we will also extend that into other kinds of functions. As with the other lessons in this unit, it should be primarily review, but maybe not all review. And even if it's review, it's good if we can get everyone in our class thinking and using the same vocabulary so that we're just all on the same page before we move forward. We'll start with a definition of slope. We want to agree on what we mean when we use the word. So I typically define slope as the measure of the steepness. Of a line. And it is a way of assigning a number to how steep a line is. So instead of just saying, well, this line is more steep or less steep than some other line, like this is the, you know, black diamond, I don't ski, but, uh, you know, slope, and this is the uh, bunny hill, uh, we actually can put a number on it. So we can say the slope of the line is 10, or the slope of the line is 5, or the slope of the line is negative one half. And that number is going to convey information about how steep the line is. Now, there are other ways of defining or describing slope. Many times when I ask this question in class, um, students will say slope is M. Okay, well, like M is a symbol that we use to represent slope, but it, it's not really a definition of slope. Though so here are some other ways that I am sure that you have heard. Um, this is a favorite one, run, really, uh, favorite one of a lot of people, and this is rise over run. So you will hear slope described that way. Rise means the vertical change in the position of the points on the line and then run refers to the horizontal change. So like rising, going up and then running, you say like you run along the, the ground. So rise over run, it is a ratio. Um, you might see this one and I'm going to describe one of those numbers for you if I can find my cursor, there it is. Um, this triangle, this is the Greek letter delta. And mathematically, it means cha change in is what it means. And so another way is saying the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's. It's just another way of denoting rise, which is the change in the y's, how much it goes up, uh, divided by the run, which is the change in the x's, how much are, are the x's changing by. This is the formula. So a lot of times students will come up with a formula. Formula is useful. Um, you got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Sometimes you'll hear uh, y sub 2, sub sub 2, meaning the 2 is a subscript. It's writing that's a little bit lower. Um, so you'll hear, y, you'll hear y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And that is just another way of saying what we have written above. It's the rise, how much are the y's going up by or, or going down, and the run, how much is the uh, x's changing. Now, this one is usually application. Um, so you'll hear slope be the rate of change, usually in an application or word problem, which are my favorite kinds of problems. An example might be something like miles per gallon. And the word per is represented by the fraction bar. And so if you were thinking of this graphically, it would be the change in miles or the rise, the change in miles, divided by the change in gallons, which would be on your x-axis. So change in miles divided by change in gallons. Um, or maybe something like this, feet per second. And in that case, your rise would be the change in feet, or how many feet you're going. Per second would be your run or your horizontal, and that would be the amount of time. So if you run 10 feet in two seconds, that is not actually running, but okay. Uh, 10 feet in two seconds, you would do 10 divided by two, and that would give you um, five feet per second, and it would be the slope of the line. So that's where I think slope gets interesting is in the application there. 
Now, I want to cover this because I think this is an overlooked skill. So you can determine the slope from a graph by simply counting rise over run. So what I'm going to do is pick two points on the line, and I'm going to count rise over run. And we're actually going to do this a couple of times. So we'll start with, say, we'll start with green. And suppose I pick these two points right here. So this point and this point. And to get from the point on the left, my rise over my run, so it's the vertical over the horizontal, and you can see that my rise to get from one point to the other is 2, and my run is 1, therefore the rise over the run is 2. Changing my color up. What if I picked the same first point, but I picked... Oh, let's come up here, this point up here, okay? So now we have rise over run. So let's count. My rise is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you are counting spaces, not lines. So, so when I get to the first line, I have counted one space. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then my run is one, two, three. And what you should notice is that six divided by three is two. Uh, let's change over to purple. So let's pick, uh, say, this point right here. I'm down um, on near the bottom of the line there. And um, we'll pick this point right here. So we'll go up like this. Oh, you know what? Let's go up a little bit higher. We'll go up, up high. We'll go up to that point that we were using before. Okay. And now if I count my rise, I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my rise is eight and my run one, two, three, four is four, and lo and behold, eight divided by four is two, okay? And now you can also, we could go in the opposite order. So I'll use orange for this last one. Suppose I wanna start counting here, and I'm gonna count, say, down to this point here. So then I would count down one, two, three, four, Okay, and so that would be a rise of negative four. And then because I am going backwards, like I'm heading in the negative direction, one, two, I would use a negative and a negative four divided by negative two would give me positive two. Okay, now what I want you to do is pick two new points that I did not pick. So pause the video and just pick two new points from anywhere, any two points that are on this line. And I want you to find the slope between those two points, just counting rise over run. Okay, now what I hope you noticed was that whatever two points you picked, that you got a slope of two. OK, that that's whatever you did. So if you picked the, the points uh, at the extreme ends here, OK, so you pick this point and this point, um, you ended up with 18, uh, 18 divided by nine, I think, which would have given you uh, two. OK, if you picked like these two points here, like any two points. So that brings us to some key ideas. The slope of a line is the same everywhere. Now that might seem obvious, like, yes, Ms. Taylor, I got it. Good, because that is absolutely key. In fact, some people might even define a line that way. It's like a, a function with constant slope, meaning the slope is always staying the same. Um, so that is, you can pick any two points at any locations on the line and you will always get the same slope. It does not matter which two points you pick. So in order to find the slope of a line, two points anywhere on that line would give you the same slope. 
Now, why is this key for Algebra 2 and beyond Algebra 2? So we're going to take a, like a sneak peek. I know we're at the beginning of Algebra 2, but take a sneak peek. Other functions that curve will not have the same slope everywhere. And so if you've got something that's curving, the slope will actually be changing. And as you move forward in math, um, you will begin to explore the idea of the slope um, at a specific point. Like, is this a point where the slope is bigger or smaller relative to some other point? And is the slope itself increasing or decreasing? Which we'll get into an idea called concavity, which you uh, uh, encounter in the next class, in which you encounter in precalculus. Um, and it builds on the idea that a line has the same slope everywhere. So we really want to just focus on that key idea. I know it might seem basic, like don't worry about it. It doesn't stay super basic, but then you take it while you got it. All right, so that's our key idea. Now that leads us to this question. Well, what if we can't count the slope? Uh, you know, some problems have really nasty numbers or they're really big numbers. Maybe they're decimals or fractions or something. They're not something that we can just look at a graph and count the slope. Well, that's when we need the slope formula. And that was on an earlier slide, but make sure that you do write it down. It is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When I was in Algebra 1, my Algebra 1 teacher would say it, y sub 2 minus y sub 1. I had no idea what he was saying. It, he was just making a funny sound after he said the y. What he was saying was y sub 2, meaning that the 2 and the 1 are subscripts. If you think about sub, it means like underneath, say a submarine, okay, goes under the water. And script refers to writing. And so a subscript is writing that is under the line of, of regular writing. Uh, a superscript is above. So an exponent is a superscript. So find the rise by subtracting the y coordinates. When I taught this in Algebra 1, I would pick. Uh, y coordinates with positive numbers. We wouldn't try to tangle with the negative numbers when we were establishing why the formula worked. Um, but basically, if you want to find out how far apart the y coordinates are, you would subtract them. You find the run by subtracting the x coordinates. And then you have to make sure you always subtract in the same order. Um, and what that means is once you decide what point one and what point two are, you cannot change your mind partway through the problem. Um, that will cause a sign error. So find the slope uh, of the line going through uh, 10, negative 2, and negative 1, 7. Either order works. You just have to stick with it once you pick it. Um, so I'm going to show it to you both ways just so you can see what I mean by that. Uh, so what I will often ask students to do is I'll say, which point is point 0.1 and which is point 0.2? And most of the time, they just pick the point on the left is point 0.1 and the point on the right is point 0.2. And that's what that subscript means. It means like this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2. So you have x1, y1 um, to indicate the x and the y of point 0.1. And then you have x2, y2, which indicate the x and the y of point 0.2. Then when you go to plug it into your formula, you should be able to do a nice direct substitution. So we have y sub 2, which is 7, minus y sub 1, which is negative 2, over x sub 2, which is negative 1, minus x sub 1, which is 10. Now, I do want to pause here for a moment. And you might be thinking, ooh, that doesn't look so great, Ms. Taylor, really? Uh, notice that there's two negatives here. One of the negatives is from the formula. Okay, so the formula has a negative. And the other neg negative was imported with the negative two. And that's why there's two there. You want to be very careful about that. Now, most of us are not super thrilled with minus a negative. And so we might change that to seven plus two. Uh, and then negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11. Uh, 7 plus 2 is 9. And so we get 9 over negative 11. Now, suppose you picked the numbers the other way. So suppose you said 
this was point two and this was point one. This is what I mean by either order works, okay? So you can do point two and then point one or point one and then point two, okay? It, it's all good either way. Uh, and then we use the same formula. So we're not tweaking the formula. We're just going to tweak the positions of the numbers. So y2 now is negative 2 minus y1, which is 7, over x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is negative 1. Ne negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9. Negative 10 um, minus, ne oh, sorry, not negative 10. We can do better. Um, 10 uh, minus negative 1 is really 10 plus 1. And that gives us negative 9 over 11. Now, you might be saying, wait a minute, one of them has a negative in the numerator, one has a negative in the denominator. It actually doesn't matter because a positive divided by a negative, okay, over here, a positive divided by a negative would give you a negative. And so if you wanted to, you could write that as negative 9 over 11. Negative 9, 11, so you could put the negative out front. But it's also true that a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and so you could bring that negative out front. Um, so it doesn't matter whether the negative lands in the numerator or the denominator. It, it just means you have a negative number. It's a negative 9, 11. Okay, um, because of the way that we the sign numbers work. And so the slope of that line is negative 9 elevenths, and it does not matter whether you pick uh, x, like the first point is x2 or x1, um, x1, x1, y1, or x2, y2, it, like, or the vice versa. What you can't do is you can't change your mind partway through. So you can't say, well, I like doing... Um, negative 2 minus 7 and I would prefer to do negative 1 minus 10 and what you end up doing is like mixing the numerator of this problem with the denominator of this problem because that actually will not work and you'll end up with negative 9 over negative 11 and a negative divided by a negative is actually a positive. So pick it whichever way you want, okay? Um, just got to stick with it once you do. Now, there is no right way, I'm reading at the bottom of the slide, there is no right way to plug the numbers in, but there is often a better way. As you practice, you will figure out ways to avoid negatives or have negatives in easier places. Now, this one I wrote specifically so that there wasn't an obviously easier way to do it, but like as you do practice with finding the slope between two points, you will get better at choosing which order you want to do them in. Um, do you want to you know, subtract one point from another or vice versa? So that's just a practice thing, but you can't get it wrong. You can't make a wrong decision there. All right, so for practice, I do want you to pause the video. Um, we'll be pausing in class for you to do this. Calculate the slope going through the lines negative three, uh, going through the points negative three, negative one, and one fifteen using the formula. Plot the points on the coordinate plane and sketch the line. Confirm your answer by counting the rise over the run. So this is intended to get you to be able to do the problem more than one way or use one strategy to check your work for using a different strategy. Go ahead, pause the video, and we'll uh, meet back when you're done. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, now, when I taught Algebra 1, I would make students write the formula out. I generally do not make my Algebra 2 students do that, but I will also point out that it took me about five seconds to write the formula, so it, it shouldn't be a big, long thing for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this this way. I'm going to do 15 minus negative 1 over 1 minus negative 3. Uh, so that's really 15 plus 1 over 1 plus 3. So it's 16 over 4 or equal to 4. Plotting the points down here. So I'm going to take the point uh, negative 3, negative 1, which is right there. And the point 115, which is up here. 
and those would be connected by a line. We'll do the best that we can. And what we're trying to do here is check our work by actually counting the rise over the run. So my rise is starting down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is my rise. And we're gonna go ahead and count the run one two three four and 16 divided by four is four and notice that by counting the rise over the run we actually ended up at the same ratio as we did using the formula and that is really valuable to be able to do because sometimes you might blank out on the formula and you can fall back on the graph and counting, you fall back on that definition. Other times, um, whatever's on the graph is not gonna be practical and you might need to use the formula. So it, it's good to have that flexibility that you can reason that out more than one way. All right, so a few notes. So we're gonna look at a couple of special cases here. Um, what is the slope of the line containing three, five and negative one, five? So we'll call this x1, y1 and x2, y2. So y2 is five minus y1 is five over negative one minus three. And so I get zero over negative four. Now at this point, a lot of students say they, they panic and they're like, what, you know, what's going on? Um, grab your calculator. Do not just take my word for it. So grab your calculator, click on over to Desmos if you need to. And I want you to do zero divided by negative four. Um, I'll pause and wait for you to do it. And what you hopefully notice is that that is equal to zero. So is it possible to have a slope of zero? Why, yes. Now, what does this line look like when it's graphed? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, um, so we have three, five, which is like, right, okay, I could use my mouse which is right about there, and negative one, five. And that is what's called a horizontal line. Okay, and then, it, so now we have like a slightly different one. So what about the line going through five, three, and five, negative one? So on that one, We'll do x1, y1, and x2, y2. So now we get negative 1 minus 3 over 5 minus 5. And we get negative 4 over 0. That is what is called undefined. That is not a possible thing. Now, if you don't believe me, go grab your calculator right now and try to do negative 4 divided by 0. And hopefully your calculator errored on you. Uh, the calculator that I have in front of me right now um, says math error is that. That is what my calculator says. Um, I'm reaching for my phone right now. Um, and I will try it on my phone. So negative four divided by zero. And my phone literally says can't divide by zero like it, it pops up. So if you blank out on that, your calculator will help you out. One of them will tell you it's zero, the other is undefined. And the reason for that is that you cannot put something into nothing. You can take nothing and divide it up. Every group has none, um, but you can't take something that exists and put it into nothing. So what does this one look like? Well, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so this one, we have the point five, three, which is right there. And then five, negative one, which is right there. And that is a 
vertical line. And they are not super, super common. Um, they are, we see them when we're talking about something that we'll get to at the end of the year called asymptotes, which is a great word. It's like one of my favorite math vocab words. But that would be your um, vertical line. So those are a couple of special cases. Um, do we see tons and tons and tons of horizontal and vertical lines? No, not really. But um, they do come up. We do see them occasionally. And you can always fall back on plotting the points and looking at the line or using the formula, whichever you're more comfortable with or both, if you're not sure in, you know, about one. So slope summary, here are the things I want you to take away from our discussion on slope. Definition, slope measures how steep a line is, okay? That's what slope is. Do not define slope as rise over run or M. Um, it, slope is a, a measure of how steep a line is. Okay, then we can get into the formulas. Slope can be found using a calculation or by counting the ratio on a graph or both. Okay, if you have like a confidence issue, you're not sure if you're doing it right, like use one as a backup for the other. Never be afraid to, to plot the points and see what it looks like. The slope of a line is the same everywhere. So no matter what two points you pick, to find the slope, um, it'll be the same everywhere. And if you've got lots and lots of choices, you're going to pick the points that are the easiest for you to deal with. So since all of them will work, pick the ones that are the easiest. Positive slope means the line tilts up. What I mean by that is this. If it's got positive slope, then your rise over your run are both going to be positive numbers and a positive divided by a positive is going to give you a positive slope. So if the line tilts up, it will have positive slope. A negative slope means the line tilts down, okay? And that is because you will be heading down to get from one point to the next and to the right, which means you'll have a negative divided by a positive, which means that your line, uh, your slope will be negative. So positive slope means the line tilts up. Negative slope means the line tilts down. A horizontal line has a slope of zero, which kind of makes sense because in between Horizontal and vertical is, I'm sorry, in between a positive and negative is zero. And last but not least, a vertical line has an undefined slope. It is simply not an operation that makes any sense. And also, um, it's not a function. Okay, now, last thing that I want to cover in this lesson, um, writing the equation of a line given two points. Now, I am actually going to be doing this a different way than I've like ever done it. Um, I have a preferred way that I do this, and this is not it. The reason I'm changing it is because we've had a change to our pre-calculus curriculum. And after going through that for a year, it was determined that this is actually the better way in terms of preparing students for the next step. So not my preferred way. If you really, really struggle with this or you really don't like it and have trouble remembering it, then um, I can show you like the way that I would normally do it, but it, it's fine either way. We are going to be using something called point slope, form of a line, as opposed to what's called slope intercept, which is uh, y equals mx plus b. So it's the point uh, slope intercept uses the slope and uses the y intercept. Point slope uses any point, not necessarily the y intercept, and the slope. Um, so this form allows us to write an equation without needing to find the y-intercept. So it does have an advantage. I just don't like memorizing another form for a line. So point slope form is right in front of you right there. I'll see if I can box it in without. Uh, so it's y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1 where m is the slope and x1, y1 is a point on the line. Any point on the line, okay? If you only have one point, 
then that's the point you're going to use. If you have more than one point, then you can pick whichever point you use. Why? Because on a line, the slope is the same everywhere. So it doesn't really matter which point you pick, you'll end up in the same spot. So here's an example. Um, write the equation of the line going through negative 2, 2, and 2, 1. So whether you're using point slope form or slope intercept form, you need to have the slope. So the first thing we'll do there is we're going to go ahead and find the slope. And uh, I'm just going to throw these numbers in here. So I'm going to do 2 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And I, I'm going to go ahead and put that negative out front because I like it out front better. I like it either out front or in the numerator. I'm not a huge fan of having it in the denominator. Now, to write the equation of the line, we are just simply going to plug into the formula here. So we'll have y equals negative one fourth, because we found the slope, times x. And I'm going to go ahead with that point there, the 2, 1, because it doesn't have negatives. So it would be x minus 2 plus y1, which is one. Um, and technically you're done. That is all you would need to do. But you could use the other, the other uh, point. So you could have negative one fourth and then it would be x minus negative two plus two. And the reason I was avoiding that is because I don't like minus a negative. However, minus a negative is just the same as adding. So I could change that to plus two. Okay, either one of those answers would be correct using point slope form. You could also multiply it through to get slope intercept form and um, that would work as well. Um, so you, and you should get the same thing either way um, if you decide to do that. So that's really all there is um, to writing the line uh, equation for a line. So once you have the slope, um, you just pick one of the two points and you throw it into point slope form. So for practice, um, go ahead and find the slope of the line containing those two points uh, and then write the equation of line containing those two points and then check your answer on Desmos by plotting those points and your equation. Um, do they uh, match up? So um, pause the video and go ahead and work that out. Okay, so we've got M. Um, I'll go ahead and just, we'll just throw X1 and Y1 and uh, X2 and Y2. So we'll have 10 minus 4 over 2 minus 0. 10 minus 4 is 6. 2 minus 0 is 2. So the slope is 3. If you want to write like and just that so we're not stringing it out too much. Um, now write the equation of the line containing those points. So you've got two different options here. And um, I would say they're both pretty good. Okay, so I've got y equals 3. Um, and then we would have either x minus uh, 0 plus 4. Or you could um, have picked the other point and you would have X minus 2 plus 10. Now, in another color, I am going to show you that these are the same thing. So if you're wondering, like, it just doesn't seem right. It should matter which one I pick. It doesn't actually matter. So if I go ahead and distribute that through right there, I would get Y equals 3X minus 0 plus 4. And that, of course, is just... 3x plus 4. That is slope intercept form. So the slope is 3 and the y intercept is 4. But if I do that with the other one, I get y equals 3x minus 6 plus 10 and negative 6 plus 10 is 4. And so you'll notice that like I get the same equation when I put it in slope intercept form. One of the reasons I've always liked slope intercept form is because all of my students will give me the same answer and I won't have half of my class picking one point and half my class picking another point. It's not a big deal, but um, it is a little bit simpler that way. And so we've got a slope of three and a y-intercept of four either way. So that's why it doesn't matter which one you pick.
Now, here's what I mean when I said um, check it on Desmos. Okay, so for Desmos, um, you would plot the two points. Okay, um, there they are. Oh, um, zoom. There they are. Okay, and then type in your equation, whichever one you picked. So if you did x um, minus two plus ten. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was like, okay, that was a little bit slow. Um, and the way you know you did it right is because the equation that you have matches up with the points that you plotted. If you picked the other one, then you would have um, x minus zero, which you honestly do not need to do. Um, there it is. And so you can tell the green one covered over that, or you could have put it in slope intercept form. Okay. And um, I know that all of those work because they all just like lined up with each other and they go through the points. So when you have access to Desmos, that is what I expect you to do. I expect you to to check your your answers and um, make sure that what you have is reasonable. All right, for your homework, um, so lesson part is done. Uh, for problems one through three, find the slope of the line um, through the given points, show the calculation, and check by counting on the graph. So I do want you to use the formula and then go ahead and just plot the points and just double check yourself by counting the rise over the run. It might seem a little bit tedious, but if you can catch even a couple of mistakes, it's going to be worth it in the long run. Um, for number two um, and three, there you go. Now three has decimals in it. Don't let the decimals freak you out, okay? formula still works for problems four through six write the equation of the line given the points that's what we just did um, so you would find the slope and then put it into point slope form pick whichever point you think is the nicer one to use for problem seven match the graph with its slope so um, I took the the numbers off the axes and everything and you have three choices of slope m equals zero m equals three and m equals negative two and just write those on the lines like which one would go with which line there okay without any numbers so you can't calculate it you have to go by the shape of the graph and then um stanley's student is riding his bike he travels 15 miles after two hours after four hours, he has pedaled 30 miles and is not sure he will be able to get off his bike. At that point, he may be very uncomfortable. How fast is Stanley riding? So after two hours, 15 miles. After four hours, 30 miles. Show your work, even if your work doesn't quite look like what we did in class. If Stanley were to continue to ride at this speed for seven hours, how far would Stanley go? Question nine is Stephanie's student is trying to write the equation of the line going through negative one, three, and four, negative two, and gets y equals negative one times x minus one plus three. Um, then I miss, I, I have a typo there. Um, plot these points and Stephanie's graph on Desmos. Is she correct? Why or why not? And then question 10, of the problems you answered, which would you like to review in class? Do not write down problems that you skipped. So you have to struggle with the problem with evidence of the struggle before you ask to go over it. I am more than more than happy to go over things that you would like to clarify and questions that you have. I actually love doing that, um, but not if you haven't tried it first. So there we go. That was lesson three.